Hello, and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 2061, the topic is nutrition, and the title is How to Solve a Performance Regression Issue. It's interesting to be talking about it in a nutrition podcast. I would assume that you would assume (laughs) that we would be talking about performance in a training podcast. But as I read through today, you'll understand why. So I have a client getting ready for a powerlifting meet. They're uh, an elite level total uh, powerlifter, personal trainer, very active job. And as we're getting closer to the meet, her squat depth has been becoming more shallow. Her adductors are super tight, and her overall movements appear much slower than we would typically see at the weights that we're using. Now, she has a long, 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 long femurs, and still actually a pretty relatively long torso, uh, but shorter torso than femurs. What that means is basically her squat is like she has to almost fold completely over uh, to get to parallel. So it's a very demanding uh, squat due to her limb lengths and body positions. She's great at bench, uh, bench is over 200 pounds. And then deadlift is, she's very strong, but the femurs still kind of make uh, deadlift hard. But squat is typically the first thing that we would see start to have issues out of her three main lifts. And unfortunately, we're starting to see that. So what's up, you know, what's happening? <laughs> I wanna read through some exchanges that we have back and forth on Instagram. So she had sent me her squat videos and she said that the squats just kind of felt like crap and she noticed she wasn't parallel and her adductors were feeling so stiff. She even spent extra time on mobility more than what I had even programmed and it still isn't making a difference. So I wrote back to her, I said, bummer to hear squats were feeling so rough. Our training volume isn't higher or more intense than what we typically do. So our recovery must be behind. So we'd want to look at our sleep, hydration, and food. Do you know about how many calories you're eating per day? So I asked her that. She responded, I was tracking my food for a bit to make sure I was getting enough protein. I ended up consuming between 1,800 and 2,200 calories per day. I tend to eat less the... The less on the days I'm on shift, so she has long uh, shift work, so she might be on shift for like 24 hours, then have a day or two off kind of thing. So she'll eat a little less on days she's on shift, a little more on days she's at home, but she's been holding her weight really well. She's holding her weight at 162 pounds. She doesn't really want to put on any more weight since she competes at a weight of 165. So she's only three pounds under her weight class allowance. I just cannot lose the weight she's saying, and I'm sure it's because it's muscle versus fat weight anyway. Now, I'm not really sure why she would be focusing on losing weight. She's already below the weight class limits. She's already relatively lean. So we're going to come back and kind of uh, touch on that again. Uh, But she wrote, I could be more active in terms of walking during the day, even when I'm off. However, it's blistering hot here in uh, South Florida. Um, there's, a, there's some things to unpack there that I won't be touching in today's podcast. But in general, uh, people often struggle. Like, she's not performing well. She wants to lose more body fat, but she's already in a caloric, caloric restriction, and her performance is going down. So she's thinking, you know, do I need to move more? Do I need to do more walking? And it's like, good God, you need to do the complete opposite. Your, your body's beat up. It's tired. It's not performing well. So we don't need to dig it deeper into a hole. So I wrote back to her, 1,800 to 2,200 is actually a little low for an active and lean 165 pound body. Typically at 165 in your activity, and especially so close to a a competition with heavy weight loads in training, we'd want to aim for 22 to 2,500 calories and 160 to 180 grams of protein. And I'm gonna give you some numbers on how you can figure those out for yourself. But I said that would feel like a lot, meaning those calories and protein, but it's within the average calorie range, meaning some people can actually handle more. I agree we don't want your weight to go up, and I recognize you've been holding your weight, but from what we can see in muscle recovery and strength recovery, we're behind. 
as we're as we're getting closer to the meat, our recovery and explosiveness is lessening. It would be helpful for us to add more carbs to the first 12 hours of the day, about 50 to 100 grams, and ensure our protein is at least 160 grams of protein a day. Even if our weight goes up a few pounds, as the metabolism adjusts to the increase of food, we still have over two weeks before the meat for it to level off, and then we can water cut the final, like maybe 12 hours before weigh-ins, and easily take off whatever we might gain. So she was thinking, that she wanted to be leaner. Uh, She's already at the weight class, and if we're within like two, three, four weeks before a meet, you don't try to continue to get leaner. (laughs) Um, Like if she wants to get leaner for regular life, uh, you wait till after the meet. You do not do that the final uh, one or two months before the meet. Now, if you're needed cut in weight, like that's a different thing. She's already at the weight. So we would hold where she is eat well, perform well, crush the meat, and then go back to fat loss. So two weeks, two months before a competition is not the time to be looking for a weight cut if it's not necessary. Because any caloric restriction is just going to impair recovery, performance, it's going to have all these negative impacts, which is exactly what we're seeing. So if we look at what the client and I discussed, the first thing we looked at was training. Training volume and intensity. If we're feeling beat up and tired, is it because we're doing more? Uh, If yes, then you have to lessen the more. (laughs) Do less more, let the body catch up and recover, and then push more. Uh, But if it's not, then we've got to keep digging for something else. So for her, her overall volume is actually lower than normal. We are lifting heavier weights, but the volume is actually less than what we normally do. So training definitely isn't the driver of why we're seeing performance regression. So what do we look into? As I wrote to the client in Instagram, sleep, hydration, and food. Sleep, we want to be getting between six to eight hours. And I know that it's going to be challenging for people, especially on shift work. Their their sleep hours are always changing. And that is just incredibly, incredibly, incredibly hard on the CNS and overall body recovery. So you have to be more precise with nutrition, uh, especially calories and protein. And... You want to normalize your sleep schedule as much as possible, meaning on days you work, you typically do X. On days you don't work, you typically do Y. And you really never try to vary from that. Don't just let whatever happens happen because that's going to be too chaotic. There's going to be no consistency and the body's not going to uh, adjust well to that. So we try to get six to eight hours. The focus mostly is on the best quality One of the best ways to improve the quality of your sleep is to go to bed at the same damn time every night, even if you have to get up at different times. So maybe you're like, I can't go to bed. I got two more hours of work to do. Go to bed and get up two hours early. There's tons of research that shows going to bed at a consistent time is extremely important, not only for sleep quality, but hormone balance and general Everything, basically everything that has to do with sleep in our body does much better when we go to bed at the exact same time, even if we have to vary when we wake up. So that's extremely important. We also have a podcast, 1149, titled Creating a Healthier Sleep Pattern. You can find older podcasts by going to our website, www.brutalironjim.com. Scroll down the homepage, you'll see a podcast player. That player goes back 300 episodes, but underneath it, we have instructions on how to find older podcasts. So you can find that, follow those instructions and just search for 1149, and it'll pull up that podcast for you. Then for hydration... We want between half to one ounce per pound of body weight. It was funny, I was telling this with one of my clients uh, who's a runner, and uh, he lives in France, so we were going through the the metric system conversions. So I said, ideally, we want one ounce of fluid per per pound of body weight. So in the rest of the world math, (laughs) outside of America, uh, that would be about 30 milliliters per 0.45 0.45 kilogram, which is weird. So we would look at 66 milliliters per one kilogram. That client weighs 80 kilograms, so he'd be looking for about five liters of fluid a day. So if you're in the metric system, that's what you're looking at is 66 milliliters per kilogram. If you're in American math, then it's one ounce per pound of body weight. Okay. Uh, now. The more active we are, the more water we need. Muscles are 75-ish percent water. 
So if they're dehydrated, they're going to feel weak, they're going to feel fatigued, they're going to feel stiff, they're not going to perform very well. If three quarters of the damn thing is water and we don't have a lot of water in our body, things aren't going to go well, <laughs> right? Then what we want to look at is food. So this is what I really wanted the client to focus on because I know their sleep is, it is what it is. I want them to, you know, always be working to try to improve it, but they probably have that pretty close to the best it can be. Hydration, this client drinks all the time, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, when every time, anytime we've ever talked about hydration, it's never been a concern. So hopefully she's still doing that. And then when she reported only eating 1,800 to 2,200 calories, uh, that's where like the red flag in my mind went off and I was like, ah, this is it, this is the problem. Uh, the reason why is she's 165-ish pounds and super active. She's a physical job. She weight trains all the time. In her spare time, she does active things. She just moves. She's a mover. She does things all the time. She's really lean. Uh, so 165 pounds is damn near straight muscle. Uh, she's well under 20% body fat, probably around 14 15% body fat. Uh, so she's very lean for 165 pounds which means that's a lot of muscle demanding a lot of calories body weight times 13 is rough roughly a good estimation for maintenance calories for moderately active people so being highly active she needs more than that 1800 to 2200 calories for her is only a body weight of 11 to 13 like a body weight times 11 to 13, that's like that's cutting phase stuff. That's stuff we do for like when people need to lose weight for competitions and things. She's She should not be in a lose weight for the competition stage right now, uh, especially not just a few weeks outside of the meet. Uh, and given that she's already in her weight class, she's already at 162, the cap's 165, she's fine. We sure as hell don't want to be in a maintenance right now. Uh, so she's already competition weight. But if she needed to cut weight, say it's like less than 10, like 10 pounds or less, then we would do that through a water cut, not a caloric deficit leading into the competition. Because when you get into a caloric deficit, you're going to negatively impact your performance, negatively impact your training. There's a lot of negatives to being in a caloric deficit when you're leading into a performance-based competition. If you want to learn how to manage water cutting before a competition, podcast 1,239 talks you through the whole process. So you can listen to that podcast. So if she's worried about making weight, and that's causing her to eat less, that would explain why we're seeing that regression in performance. Our performance, which would be energy during our workouts, CNS and muscle recovery between the workouts, and adaptive progressions made from the training stimulus between our workouts. All of those things depend on calories, protein, hydration, and sleep. So if any of those elements are off, we're going to see a regression in performance. Now what can we do? For this client, I want her to eat more carbs at the beginning of the day, try to get her calories up. Uh, that's going to provide her more energy, it's going to help just, she's going to feel more explosive in her training, she's going to feel more hydrated because the more food is going to bring in more some like water that's in the food so it's actually uh, help improve hydration help improve uh, glycogen storage she's just going to feel a lot better now even if she doesn't eat carbs it still will um, take away from calories that would have had to come from glycogen uh, so even eating other foods is still going to help preserve uh, performance based uh, demand like energy for her workouts and then we want to make sure we're maintaining the pr appropriate protein amount. Really, if anybody's tracking anything, you want to be doing that the last, I would say, a minimum eight weeks before a competition. If you ever track anything, that's when you do it. You wouldn't want to leave going into a competition being like willy-nilly or, oh, I think it's fine. Don't think, no. So track stuff, especially when you're getting closer to a competition. Make sure you have the right calories, like we said, Body weight times 13 is maintenance for like moderately active people. So if you're lifting weights, you're going to need body weight times 14, maybe even body weight times 15. You want to be eating as much as you can to sustain the weight that you need for competition. Not as little as you can and start to feel and see these regressions starting to happen. So for you, what you want to look at is training. If you made any recent increases in intensity or volume, you might need to back those down if you're feeling or seeing a regression in performance. 
you then want to look at nutrition. Are you eating enough calories? Are you eating enough protein? Track what you're doing and really double check on yourself. You might think you're doing well, but don't think. No. Know what you're doing, not think what you know what you're doing, right? Don't, why in the hell would we leave anything to chance when we have the ability to control it? Crazy pants. So definitely track that stuff. Then hydration, like we said, try to get around one ounce per pound of body weight. Or if you're a, a metric uh, system person, then you are looking at 66 milliliters per kilogram. And then sleep. Try to sleep as best as you can. Try to be consistent with when you go to sleep. Everything else will kind of improve uh, if you focus on just that element alone. So take care of your body if you want to perform well. If performance is decreasing, look at how well you're taking care of your body. How are you supporting performance? Right? If I if you know if I want to drive my car, I gotta fill it up with gas, I gotta take it to the garage shop, do maintenance on it, gotta change oil. There's a lot of stuff <laughs> you gotta do to take care of a car if you want to drive the car. How well are you taking care of your body? So if you're seeing, feeling a regression in performance, look at how you support performance. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful, give you some food for thought, give you some stuff to look into if you are experiencing that issue. If you have any questions, if you need anything, you can always reach out on our website, www.brutalirongym.com. You can look at the different services we offer, but also on the bottom of the homepage is a contact form. You can send me a message at any time, and I will get back to you. If you like the podcast, please share the podcast. The more people we share it with, the more people we can help. If you like the podcast, you can also consider donating to support the podcast, which you can do on our website. And if you like the information we share in the podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels. You can find us and follow us on Instagram and YouTube under the name Brutal Iron Gym. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.